Uh, this story took place in 1989, uh, Christmas time, the end of the me decade, and uh, I was visiting Toronto, and my estranged wife phones me and says, uh, let's have lunch, you know, it's Christmas. So we get together at the Shishi uh, Italian restaurant, <clears throat> very nice, tablecloths, very, very civilized, and uh, we order some drinks. At a certain point, she, she reaches into her big purse, and she pulls out the uh, final divorce papers, and she wants me to sign them right there in the restaurant. <laughs> so I'm a little shaken, but I figure, you know, the jig's up. So I grab the pen. I'm just about to, to sign the papers. And the guy at the table next to us, a uh, big guy, he, he does this. He goes, uh, hoo, and uh, collapses in his chair, right? So I think, okay, well, I, I'll put the pen down. <laughs> how, how fortuitous. <laughs> Well, so I, <laughs> postponing the inevitable. So anyway, I, I go over, and sure enough, I mean, the guy is turning blue. He's like a big blue popsicle. And uh, uh, his, his dining companion, his buddy, uh, he's like uh, totally frozen. <laughs> he's completely catatonic. As a matter of fact, the entire restaurant has gone totally Canadian. You know, not happening, not happening. <laughs> so anyway... Uh, I loosen the guy's tie. That doesn't do anything. So, so the, uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the hostess comes over, and she says, oh, the, the paramedics are on their way. So it's like, well, okay. Uh, well, let's lay him down on the ground. I, and I think, oh, I, I'll give him mouth to mouth. I didn't know how to do CPR then, but uh, I remembered the Red Cross ads from TV when I was a kid. I tilt the head, pinch the nose, and blow. Hey, I can do that. So we get him on the floor, clunk. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I get down there and uh, pinch the nose, tilt the head, and his mouth is full of um, pork medallions, <laughs> wild rice, uh, a few uh, uh, asparagus spears, so I, I sort of uh, excavate that, right? And look, he's not an attractive man, but hey, <laughs> who am I, you know? So I start blowing, and he's going up and down, sure enough, and, and you know, he's not so blue. <laughs> so all of a sudden, uh, from, from in the corner of the room, this woman goes, uh, you're doing that all wrong. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you very much for your kind words of encouragement. <laughs> you you, you want to help? Uh, no, no, anybody? No, nobody. So I keep blowing away, and then finally, the uh, paramedics come flying in, right? And the first guy, the first guy says to me, he says, oh, oh, keep doing that. Keep doing that mouth-to-mouth -mouth thing. That's good. I think, what a fluke. Screw you, lady. <laughs> so I'm blown away, and then finally, they push me out of the way. They just, they jump the guy, basically. They're pounding on him, they're beating him, they rip his clothes off, they're sticking him with big spikes. It's like a gang mugging at a Surrey Skytrain station. It's, just, it's totally ghastly. So, uh, <coughs> so anyway, in the middle of all this, uh, kitchen door bursts open. The waiter comes out. He's got four plates of pasta in his arms, right? He looks down, he looks left, he looks right. He's completely blocked. So he very gingerly hops over the body and uh, delivers these plates of pasta to these four guys in black power suits up in the corner. And they're going, hey, what's with the body? We're having a meeting, right? And I, I'm looking at the waiter, I'm thinking, this guy is good. It's like, wow. So anyway, at this point, they're getting ready to take the guy out. And he's not blue anymore. He looks kind of like uh, dry asphalt. Anyway... <laughs> You know, I say to the paramedic, you know, I tried to help the guy, and nobody, everybody just sat there. I, is, is, you think he's going to make it? And in a very cheerful voice, he goes, I don't know, happy holidays, and zoom, <laughs> off they go. I never see the guy again. I don't know if the guy lived or died. So I'm just, you know, pretty shaken at this point. I go back to the table. I sit down. I look up. There's my soon-to-be ex-wife, and she's like this. She's got the papers and the pen, right? And I'm thinking... Boy, that's cold. <laughs> anyway, I figure, okay, let's go. So I, 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 once again, I'm just about to sign the paper. Kitchen door bursts open again. This time the owner comes out, right? He does a little pirouette in the middle of the room, and he goes, hey, free dessert for everybody. 
Now I know I'm in the bizarro world. I mean, you know, he just killed one guy. Now he wants to knock off all the, uh, you know, all the witnesses with dessert, right? A bunch of Canadians going, yeah, I'd like two, please. You know, so, <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, I sign the paper, finally. I burst into tears. I get a hold of myself. I'm sitting there. I'm thinking of nothing. And then all of a sudden, very slowly, it starts to come to me. Holy moly. I'm free. Yes, Virginia. There is a Santa Claus. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody, no matter what happens. Thank you.